Hello world and welcome to FUBAR! In this episode we are going to use Cloud Deploy and Serverless Framework to deploy our serverless application using Canary and Linear Deployment Strategies. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started! <laughs> This is the second part of these two part videos where I was talking about different deployment strategies. I leave you the card in the top and in the description box where I talk about the theoretical part of this thing. So we talk about the different deployment strategies and why we are so interested in this and what is called deployed and how it can help us. So in this video, I want to just go to the code and get started. So we are grabbing a simple project and we are going to deploy it using the canary and also the linear strategies and we are going to see the different results. As always the code will be available in github and you can find the link in the description box and everything that we are going to do is infrastructure as code as always. So let's start creating a new project. I will call it deployment strategies and we are going to create a new serverless framework project just SLS create with a template AWS Node.js and the name deployment strategies and then we can open it with Visual Studio Code. Now we can clean the serverless YAML and then start typing our functions. I will speed up this because we know how the cleaning goes. So I will create two functions, one that we are going to deploy with the canary method and the other one that we are going to deploy with the fun uh, linear method. So I will call one hello and the other one hola for now, but I will change the name in a moment to something a little bit more descriptive. These two functions are extremely simple and they do the same. One uh, displays hello world and the other one displays hello world in Spanish, hola mundo. And each has a subversion, so we will track which version is being returned. When we do the deployments, we can see if we are getting the version one or version two and so on. So it's a very, very simple piece of code because this is not what we are trying to tackle in this video. So now you have seen, I have created the two functions. I have put the different versions and now we can go to the plugin page and start setting up this plugin. The link is in the description box so you can go and check it out. As always with a plugin you need to install it and we are going to install the plugin in the project. If you have never worked with serverless framework plugins I leave you a link to a playlist where you can learn all about them. So the next thing we are going to do is to set up the roles that this project will need. So we will need to access code deployed so that's important and then we are going to install the plugin in the serverless YAML so we can use it. The next thing is that we can start adding the deployment settings. We will add the type and the alias for now. Later we will add the hooks. So let's add deployment settings to the two functions so we can have different deployment strategies for each of the functions. The alias is just the name of the alias that we are going to use. We call it live in this case. And here are all the different Types of deployment settings, we are going to pick the canary 10% for 5 minutes and the linear 10% uh, for 1 minute. So these are like the fastest deployments that are available. So basically the canary will do 10% for 5 minutes and after 5 minutes it will shift all the code and the linear will take 10 minutes to deploy. It will start adding 10% more and more every 10 minutes. And I changed the name now to the functions to make it a little bit more clear. I will call it canary and linear and return hello canary and hello linear. It's easier to understand what is going on. Now we will uh, deploy and the first time we deploy it will be just a normal deployment because we don't have any traffic. So the deployment will go pretty fast and I will just speed this up so we can see what happens after this. So now deploy we can go and see in the AWS console in the code deployed we have one new application called deployment strategies that is the name of our uh, thing so we will be able to see things there. So now let's go to our handler.js and change the version and deploy it again. 
uh, we are going to create some HTTP uh, calls to the different endpoints so then we can see if we are getting version 1 or version 2. Now if we call before deploying we are going to get always version 1 because that's the version that is uh, deployed so we can try many times and it's always version 1 coming because version 2 is not deployed yet. I'm using this extension from Visual Studio Code that you can run HTTP calls from the text editor and that's really handy because then I can do it without leaving. So I like that. Good. So now we have modified our handler JS to have the version 2. So now we can deploy and now the deployment will take long. The canary will take 5 minutes and the linear will take 10 minutes. And if we see the deployment from our console will be kind of stuck until the whole thing move on. So the serverless deployment here is kind of uh, combined with the code deployed. So we are just deploying it from here and then we will see that the progress bar there doesn't move. If we go back to the AWS console, we can just refresh that code deploy and we can see what is being shown there. So this is our application, it has two uh, lambdas, two functions, one the canary and the linear, and they are both in progress, they are being deployed right now. If we open them in different tabs, we will see what is going on. So this is the linear, and if we go to the deployment, there we can see how the traffic is shifting. So we can see that there are three steps, the pre-deployment validation, traffic system, and the post-deployment de validation. And then we have the traffic system progress, that now we have 90% in the old traffic and 10% in the new traffic. And for the canary, we will have exactly the same, but it will be a little different the moment that five minutes pass, then we will have um, all the traffic shifted. So if we now do some requests, we should get in the linear some of the version 2 now and then and most of the version 1 because now only 10% of the traffic is going to version 2 and 90% is going to version 1. So now and then we get version 1. The same happens with Canary. If we uh, make a request, we will get version 2 sometimes and most of the time version 1. And then as the time progresses, we will start getting more uh, in the linear. We will get more version 2 and until we get to the 10 minutes and then in the canary it will stay for five minutes with this traffic. Now we are not doing any kind of pre-deployment validation or post-deployment validation so that should just go but yeah so now I will just keep on making requests and checking the console for the next 10 minutes and I will speed this up so you don't have to wait for this. But you will see that the traffic in the linear starts shifting from 90 to 70 to 50 to da, 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 until it reaches zero and all the traffic is being moved away. So now it's 20% in the old traffic, in the old lambdas and 80% in the new. And if we can wait for another minute, then everything will be shifted. And now if we do request, then we are always getting the version two. Now we are going to add the pre-traffic hook and the post-traffic hooks. These are validations that we can do before and after the deployment goes. And we are going to add them in our deployment settings. We can define which are the pre-traffic hook and which are the post-traffic hooks and their lambdas. So we just define them as handler and code as we do with lambdas. They don't need a trigger because they will be triggered automatically from the code deploy. So it's pretty simple. We create a new file where we are going to put these hooks. I will call it hook.js and it will be the handler file for the hooks. So let's rename the handler.prehook. Let's change it to hooks.prehook and hooks post hook. And there we just create a new method called prehook and post hook. And then we need to add some special code. The code is available in the documentation and I will just copy paste it here because it's easier and I will explain you what it does. This is the code for, for managing the hooks. The first thing we do is we read the deployment ID from the event payload. 
Then we read the lifecycle event hook execution ID from the event as well. And then we have a piece of code where we can run our validation. So I created, for one example, um, a module that produ produced some integration tests. And that needs to return success or fail. If it returns success, then the deployment will continue. And if it returns fails, then the deployment will fail and will stop. So now, because I want to make things a little bit simpler, I will just hard code the values in the status and not use some external method. After it success or fails, then we need to build the return the response to code deploy. And as always, when we are using the AWS SDK, we need to create a params a par object where we put the deployment ID, the lifecycle event hook ID, that is the two things that we got from the event, and then the status if it's success or fail. And then we need to pass that to the code deploy and see uh, so we can continue with the deployment. Basically for the pre-hook and the post-hook is exactly the same code. The only thing that will change is the validation in the middle. The validations that you will do in the post-hook are a little bit different than the ones in the pre-hook. So I will set up these two things to be more or less the same. And what I will do now is I will set up the status that returns this uh, lambda in the pre-hook to succeed. So we can see the whole um, deployment working and going to the next step. But in the post hook, after the, the whole deployment is done, I will put it to fail. So then we can see the deployment fail and see how it looks like. And don't forget to uh, import the AWS library and the code deployed module. We need it. And after everything is set up, we can just deploy and then we can speed this up until we start seeing the console. So when it starts deploying, we will see that the two deployments are running and we can see that the pre-deployment validation already ran and it completed. So we can go and open another terminal and check that the logs for the pre-hook, we can see that it ran two times, one for each of the lambdas and it went through so that's good and now we need to wait for like 10 minutes or at least five minutes until the canary is totally completed and we can see how the post hook works so i will speed this up until the canary is deployed so now canary is completed and the traffic will be shifted 100 percent and we can see that the status failed because the post deployment validation failed so that's how it looks like when you run it. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions about deployments or any other service from AWS that you want me to address, let me know in the comment box below. I always like to make videos that you want to watch. Around here, there are other videos from my channel that the algorithm is recommending you. So maybe you should check them out. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao!